Okay, so now that we have at least two scrape targets, we can begin to run some more interesting queries. The first one I'll do is scrape duration seconds. It gives us two time series back, one for each endpoint, the one on 9090 and the one on 9100. These are the job names that we've set in our configuration file. I can just filter this by just job equals Prometheus. And it gives me just Prometheus. Or I can say, just give me the one instance for 9100. Like so. And these are the labels. That's the instance label. And that's the job label. We can also filter these by regular expressions. So I'm going to use a different metric this time called node CPU seconds total. That gives us eight different time series, all with a different mode. We know we can filter by the mode label. But in this particular example, I want to see the IRQ and the soft IRQ. So I can do a regular expression. So we go to mode equals the regular expression operator dot star means anything and then irq and that's given me mode equals irq and soft irq all kinds of regular expressions are supported and you can find those in this page here on github there's a link in the accompanying documentation okay so let's look at the different kinds of data types that are being returned here so let's use scrape duration seconds and i'll filter for just localhost 9100 this is one time series the type of data that's been returned is called an instant vector and that means we can view it in a graph straight away so it's a time series containing a single sample for every timestamp we can also return what's called a range vector. It's, it's the same instant vector, but split up into smaller sections. For example, I want to split that up one minute. So this time series is now split up into four different sections, all 15 seconds apart. So 95, 310, 25, 40. This 15 seconds comes from the configuration here. So we have a default scrape interval of 15 seconds but for our jobs we also have a job scrape interval of 15 seconds and 15 seconds down here so that's why that's split up into 15 seconds we can also look at that as 10 minutes and that gives me a whole lot more there we can look at that as 30 seconds and that gives me two just we go back to one minute we don't like that being grouped by 15 second intervals we can change that to say let's group that for every 20 seconds so now i get three 20 seconds apart 380 400 420. that's a range vector now you can't graph a range vector it doesn't like it it says well the graphing function needs it to be a scalar or an instant vector so to convert it to an instant vector we can either remove that and we get the data as a graph or we can wrap that into a function. And one function you might want to try is rate. And that converts a range vector back into a instant vector. To show you what rate is actually doing, we'll use a different metric being node netstat TCP index. That is the instant vector. Let's turn that to a range vector, which is going to break the graph. Very good, now let's wrap that in rate. And now rather than it being an, an ever increasing graph, it's now showing me the differences. And I can look at that more over time. There we go. And here, this little break is because I restarted the Prometheus process a little while ago. There are many functions in Prometheus and you can find those here in this functions page here on the prometheus website and they're all down here to look at rate this one here rate it takes a range vector calculates the per second average rate of increase of the time series in the range vector there we go and there are many of them 
Okay, now let's look at another one. This is an aggregation function called sum. And to demonstrate that one, I'm going to look at first a one metric called go threads. And it gives us the thread count for both of our endpoints. One is eight and one is five. We can sum those by using the sum aggregation function. There we go, 13. It's just given us one now. One instant vector, which we can look at over time. Okay, so that's the basics of functions. They're all outlined in this section here. And we can take functions even further by running functions in functions, and that's called subqueries. Go back to this one here. Let's wrap that in the rate function. Rate it for uh, one minute this time. There we go. Now let's add another function to it. So we'll do ceiling. It's a metric inside a function inside a function. We can go even further. Let's add deriv. This function needs a range vector. So I'm going to convert that to a range vector being one minute and a default 15 seconds. There we go. Well, that looks quite nice, actually. We can see there's something very important happened just then. Okay, so going back to the documentation, deriv is here, calculates the per second derivative of the time series in a range vector. See, so it needs a range vector. And let's look at the ceiling. There we go. Rounds the sample values of all elements in up to the nearest integer. And the opposite of that is floor. There we go. We have many functions. And they can be nested into subqueries.